today I am here with a little haul video, but it's a haul video with a difference because this is actually the books and bookish items that I got for Christmas and I was so so lucky. Clearly my family and friends know me very well because I did get an awful lot of books and I'm very excited about all of them. But before I start with the books, I'm just going to show you a couple of bookmarks I got that are pretty cute. So this is a metal bookmark that says, oh, you're not gonna see it because of the glare, but it's basically 50 books to read before you die. And I've read through this list and I've read embarrassingly few of them. But to be honest, I'm not overly interested in most of the ones on this list, so I'm not too bothered about that. And then this really cute one with a hummingbird on it and a little tassel, really, really pretty. They're just bookish items that I thought I would show you before I get into it. This is in no particular order. I am literally just going to grab the books as they come to hand. So first up, we have The Toy Makers by Robert Dinsdale with these beautiful red sprayed edges. I got this from my friend Jess and I know nothing about it, so I'm going to read the synopsis to you. The Emporium opens with the first frost of winter. While the Great War wages across Europe, there is a place of hope and enchantment in the heart of London. The Emporium sells toys that capture the imagination of children and adults alike. Patchwork dogs that seem alive, toy boxes that are bigger on the inside, soldiers that can fight battles on their own. Into this family business comes young Kathy Ray, running away from a shameful past, but Kathy is about to discover that the Emporium has secrets of its own. So that sounds really interesting to me. It sounds a little bit like the toy shop version of Night at the Museum, which sounds very interesting. I'm guessing that it's a um, middle grade novel, so like eight to 12 year olds. Uh, but it looks like it might be one of those that's also suitable for young adults and adults as well. So I'm looking forward to getting into that one. Next up, we have The Long Walk by Stephen King while he was writing as Richard Buckman. This book is a little bit too difficult to get hold of, I believe. My mum said that she had a real trouble finding a copy of it, um, but she did manage to get one secondhand for me. So I'm super pleased about that because it is pretty high on my list of books that I want to read. Uh, this one is a dystopian novel. It follows a young boy named Ray Garrity who participates in this yearly ritual along with 99 other 16 year olds called the Long Walk. And the rules of the walk are that everybody has to walk at four miles an hour and it's the last man standing. You get up to three warnings if you drop below speed and it says three warnings and you're out of the game permanently, which sounds very okay. ominous. I haven't read any dystopian novels for a while. I did read Scythe and Thunderhead, but they're more utopian than dystopian. Usually I don't tend to like dystopian. Well, I do. I like dystopian novels, but I don't like the endings of dystopian novels. But this one really captured my attention and I'm really looking forward to getting to it. Next up, we have Noughts and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. And this is a book that was popular maybe five or 10 years ago, but I didn't read it at the time. And I haven't really heard much about it since. My friend at work who doesn't read a lot of fiction or at least not fantastical fiction um, recommended this. And actually she got this for me for Christmas. So that was lovely of her. And having read the synopsis, it sounds a little bit like a Romeo and Juliet retelling um, but I don't know much more about it than that and I don't really want to because my colleague also spoiled book three in this series for me so I'm kind of hoping that I am still going to enjoy this but I really have a hard time reading books when I know something that's going to happen like specific um, within the plot but yeah I'm looking forward to getting into this one Next up, a little bit of a different one, is Bedtime Stories for Stressed Out Adults. Um, it says introduced by Lucy Mangan, but I'm guessing that there are multiple authors in this because it is a bind up 
of various short stories and poems that are written in a soothing tone that will help you to get some sleep and frankly this is something that I need in my life so this will be going on my bedside table and hopefully I'll be able to read one short story or poem a night before bed and hopefully it'll help me sleep hopefully Next up, I have most of the Girl of Fire and Thorns series by Ray Carson. Now, I got these from my grandma for Christmas, but she didn't realise that this one, the Girl of Fire and Thorns stories, is actually just a bind-up of the prequels to the series. And then she got me, I don't know which way round these are, but The Crown of Embers and The Bitter Kingdom which are books two and three, I don't know which way around, and I don't have book one. Um, but the, again, this is a series that has been on my list of things to read for quite a while, so I'm looking forward to getting into this series and I will inevitably have to pick up the first book um, to start me off. But I don't know whether to read the prequel short stories first or jump right into book one. Quite often I think that these are released afterwards um so i'm not sure about that if you have any opinions on that one do let me know next up is another series which is the queen of the tearling by erica johansson so we have the queen of the tearling which i know is book one and then i'm not sure which way around the other two go but it's the invasion of the tearling and the fate of the tearling and again this is another series that has been on my list of things to read for quite a while. This book follows a character named Kelsey Glynn who has returned to the place of her birth to take over the queendom and I don't really know too much more about it than that. I believe that it's young adult and it's fantasy so it's right up my street. I heard about this one I remember from Reagan from the Channel Cruise Project and I den generally tend to have similar reading tastes to her so that's all I really need to know to be honest. The next one is a bit of a different one again and it's called Cat Stories. It doesn't have an author because I think it's another one where there's multiple authors because this is a bind up of various short stories about cats and well need I say more I like cats that's it and finally I have the beautiful illustrated edition of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them illustrated by Olivia Lominek Gill and this is one of those that all of the proceeds or all of the profits from the sales of these books go to charity. So that's already a win in my opinion. But even aside from that, the illustrations in this book are just absolutely beautiful. I'm not even selecting specific pages here. I am just selecting random random pages to show you honestly so so pretty so pretty and I'm actually really looking forward to reading this because I never actually read um the Fantastic Beast book when it came out and that was a long time ago um so especially with all of these illustrations I'm really looking forward to reading this one and that's it for the books I got for Christmas. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me, then do think about hitting that subscribe button. I'd be so, so grateful. And I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks. Bye.